everybody. Today we're going to talk about doing advanced selection techniques with something other than flyaway hair. Uh, in a previous video I showed you how to use advanced selection techniques to select somebody with um, longer hair and kind of refine that selection. Here I'm going to show you that we can do it on a lot of different objects. I have this picture here of this eagle and rather than going around with my pen tool here and selecting uh, the eagle step by step, which would work, but it would take quite a while, I'm going to simply paint my mask. So I'm going to go to Image, uh, Calculations, and here I'm going to set my first channel to blue, my second source channel to the blue channel as well, and what this is doing is basically doubling up these channels. The more channels we put on top of each other, in this case, the darker. Then I'm going to set my view to Overlay. Once I have that, I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. What that will create is a brand new channel in our channels palette. And basically we want to try to find as high contrast as possible, much like I described in the other video. All right, well, right now my mask isn't really complete. We know black doesn't show up, white shows up. So we have a few more things we can do. Uh, right now I'm going to go ahead and add an image adjustments levels onto that newly created layer in the channels palette that I just made. And here, I'm going to make sure preview is selected, and what I tend to do is grab my white areas and grab those, and then find the darkest area with the dark eyedropper tool and grab that. That kind of gives me a starting point. And then I'll adjust my sliders here just until I can get a dark image. Now, it may take a little tweaking here, but after a while you can find yourself getting a pretty concise image. Now it's not going to be perfect, so do not worry. I'm going to hit OK, and now I need to invert this image. So I'm going to go to Image Adjustments, Invert, and now we can see really what we need to paint. So I'm going to go ahead now and get my brush, and I'm going to make sure my brush is loaded with, hit X here, white paint, and I'm going to kind of fill in some of my mask. And this is really important. Basically, I'm painting my mask. Now it gets a little tricky in here, so if you feel like you're having trouble keeping in between the lines, go ahead and try overlay. And what you'll find is overlay, you can be as messy as you want near the edges, but it will not really paint outside the edges. So it's kind of going back and forth between normal and overlay. So here I know that's part of it. I'm going to paint right there shrink my brush and don't be afraid to use your zoom tool either you can see we have a lot of interesting stuff going on in here so constantly shrinking my brush I'm going to go ahead and paint some of the beak and there we go and then just clean up some of these dots overall this looks pretty good um, we do have some areas like here on the claws that we need to go ahead and paint over so I'm going to roughly just clean that up. And you can see though, this would have taken me a lot longer if I were to do this with the standard uh, selection technique. Now this doesn't mean that replaces your technique. This is just an aid to help you get to where you need to further. So once I have my uh, area cut out, I'm going to hold Command or Control on a PC and click inside of the alpha box. When I have that selected, I'll go back to my layers panel and for organizational sake I'll duplicate my background layer and call this eagle there we go and now that I have the eagle ready to go I'm gonna go ahead and hit my mask and as you can see it's cut out my eagle rather nicely but we do have some stuff we need to fix so if I zoom down you'll see everything from the feathers to the uh, the feet are cut out perfectly but I do have some blue carrying over so a good rule of thumb I use here is I create a new layer usually and I usually put a darker color for instance maybe like a, a dark brown or even a gray. I'm going to go ahead and hit command or excuse me all option delete to get that so now you guys can see that that color kind of right off the bat. So now I need to refine my mask. Now I'm going to use the CS5 method here and to do that I'm going to go ahead and get my uh, go to my selection filter, grab the mask, and go to refine mask. This is only in CS5. Basically, he, uh, this would be called refine edge in CS4, and it would not automatically update your mask. Therefore, you would have to basically 
add or subtract or paint more color into your mask or create a new mask altogether. So I'm going to go to Refine Mask and a couple of options I want to first deal with is the um, Smart Radius Edge Detection. Now you can see if I just move this ed edge detection I get a pretty good result. Um, sometimes the higher the number it is the, the better, sometimes it doesn't work too well. Uh, you can see it's kind of going through its calculations. What I tend to do is I turn on my Smart Radius. Now when I move it up it tends to eat up some of that blue. Also we have a little tool that will help with that as well and if I paint right where I have the flyaway feathers it will slowly gray those out so not too bad. I will end up losing some transparency in the feathers but overall it's going to look rather nice. Another uh, great way to kind of get around this is to use your decontaminated colors. This will basically take everything and you can see if I really tweak it it will really start to get rid of some of that excess blue that we had in there and really it's a matter of painting where you see the blue uh, the the uh, mask here will do the adjusting for me and again it's really trial and error at this point so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, paint some of these areas and again adjust the smart filter as I go to see if I can't get a uh, a good item a good result and basically paint away so again if I at any time want to turn off smart radius and go to regular radius I can do so but you can see that the results will vary depending on your background in my case I keep picking up this blue which is not necessarily a bad thing but uh, I really should maybe I'll erase some of the refinements here and this is the eraser this just basically takes it back to where it was and now maybe I can use some smart filter there we go, we'll refine the edge there to kind of push some of that back. And just subtle clicks. Looks pretty good. We're getting there. Look at the rest of it, make sure we don't have any odd flyaways. Pretty decent. Let's go ahead and we can even view over the original that's the original there, that's on black, that's on white. This is looking pretty good. Alright, we can see the marching ants. And now that we have it, I'm going to hit OK. And what this will do is create a brand new mask for me. And I can delete that old one that it had up here. And what you'll see is it's actually pretty cool. You kind of lose some of that blue. Uh, it's still there, but overall not that noticeable. So now when we cut it out, you can see we have a lot more uh, fine-tuned options. And there are areas that it gets a little muddy in for instance here but then simply go and grab your mask tool and again paint away on your mask that's basically all you have to do um, to kind of achieve you know really the look you want and again um, this is going to take a lot less time depending on your situation than going in with the old pen tool so again it varies per object and uh, it's not always perfect but hopefully this is cleared up uh, some some uh, ideas on how to use advanced selection techniques.